Building a space that is both inviting and unique is always a challenge for new brewers. Juniata Brewing Company in Huntington has done just that. In 2018, my former employer decided that they would stop paying me, so I needed to find something else to do. What's the next step of my life? I'd been doing uh, online education for over a decade at that point. Uh, prior to that, I worked for Verizon, so I was doing you know computer stuff, data stuff uh, for two decades. I was like, okay, what's the next thing going to be? A lot of my local friends had talked about the fact that a brewery is something that was missing in the area, could exist and I decided to take that and see if I could run with it. I sat down for about a month or so, like crunching numbers and doing research, trying to figure out whether or not it was something that could happen. Everything I saw said that like, I'm not necessarily going to be rich making a brewery in Huntington, uh, but I will you know, not starve either. Uh, so it's like, okay, let's see what we can do with this. I knew I wanted to stay in the borough and I needed to have a space that gave me enough options and was structurally fit for the kind of things that we wanted to do. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the time has finally come. Here's the big announcement. Uh, we closed this morning on the space that is about to become the Juniata Brewing Company. So behind me, you'll see 1102 Susquehanna Avenue, former home of uh, Ender's Lumber and Millwork. E.B. Enders Incorporated was founded in 1928, um, and they were the original builders of this building. Lumber, furniture, home goods store, so think mom and pop Home Depot uh, as time wore on. This place sat dormant for a while, so being able to take this over and use it to make a new touchstone for the community was really important for what we were trying to do here. It had the bones to be able to support things like a kettle holding 150 gallons of water without like falling through the floor. So it's a good spot like in the middle of town. We have the ability to draw foot traffic from the college as centrally located in the borough as we are. Uh, it's not too terribly far out of anybody's way to get here. The warehouse that's attached to the building is also part of this entire parcel. We've taken two of the bays and turned it into uh, covered outdoor seating. That's actually where we do most of our entertaining. Outdoors has been you know, preferable for customers, but also the space where we could fit more people. With 10 tables outside, I have seating for 60, and I can actually have somebody who's you know, mildly popular play some music and have enough people be able to sit out there to actually enjoy it. My vision for it is to create like one of those third places that isn't work, that isn't home, that people come to. I don't think you'll find a whole lot of tap rooms that look like this one. A lot of them sort of go for that general industrial look where it's a bit more exposed, like you, un like you know that you're at a brewery because you can see the ductwork for things. We went in a very different direction here trying to get a bit more warm. Like I wanted people to uh, feel comfortable here, but feel comfortable in the same sense that they feel comfortable at, you know, a friend's house, and not necessarily like you know feel comfortable at a in a large warehouse or something like that, and just hanging out with folks. So if you see some anything made of wood that you enjoy looking at in this building anywhere, uh, my partner and his father are the ones who are directly to blame for that. Um, particularly his dad, but David knows his way around tools as well. The real crux was actually the tables that uh, are here now. So those tables were in our warehouse as the vertical supports for the second floor. You can see a whole bunch of nail holes because that was the sport and all, everything was nailed in across for the planks. When we built our walk-in, they built it from scratch. We took out that second floor uh, in the warehouse to be able to build it. They kept the wood and then took it home and pared it down and we're like, holy crap, this can be, be absolutely beautiful. Um, and that's really like how the genesis of the look for the place started to come together. That's when David got the idea for, you know, a tree at the end of the bar. That tree is the top 10 feet or so of what used to be a 40 foot tree. 
uh, that fell down in David's childhood home in Pine Grove Mills. The bar itself is also from their property. They took it, slabbed it, put it, put, took it apart and put it back together. That aesthetic, like all was born out of like the start of us building out this space. So the fact that we're still here is a testament to the community being able to come out for us. That said, I will also tell you that like local pride gets people to come out once. Uh, otherwise it's like, I, I'm so sad that they closed. I wish them so well as, as you need to actually have a product that people are willing to come back out for. There's two of us that are like founded the business. David is the beer and I'm the everything but. In my experience, my partner's abilities with beer is one very, very high, but the thing that I think that he's very, 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 very good at is creating beers that highlight very particular notes of the beer. There aren't a dozen different things going on. You're not trying to get, you know, lactose and fruity pebbles and and, 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 like, you know, 18 different flavors packed into a beer. When he makes it, he's able to, like, find those notes, be able to draw those out, and be able to let you know what those notes are. We are in a craft desert of sorts here, where, you know, Coors Light, Mick Ultra are, like, the beers du jour most days. So being able to do a little bit of, like, beer education when it comes to things like that was very, very important. Uh, people ask me, like, like, when did you, you know, fall in love with brewing or beer? I still haven't brewed a drop in my life. Uh, my partner has the love of the beer. Um, I have a love for this community. Uh, and I think that that's one of those things that sort of like makes breweries a little bit special overall. People come at it because they have a love for the beer, they have a love for the people around them. Um, and I think that that's the thing that actually sets breweries apart in the end is that we're not trying to fit one particular brewery mold. We're trying to you know, make the world around us a little bit better place. Even for people who aren't local, so bringing uh, the tourists in, bringing the visitors, and giving them that local connection. It's like here, like you came to Raystown Lake, to the marina to you know, ride out on your boat. Here's additional things that are part of this area that you're in for you to understand. Uh, even goes, it goes like to our logo, which is like a stylized arrowhead, sunset in the middle, and then the mountains and meant to evoke the river moving through. It's like, that's continuing that local connection for the people that are coming here um, and the people that are already here.